हेलो एवरीवन दिस इज डॉक्टर गोविंद राय गर्ग इन दिस वीडियो वी विल डिस्कस दी क्वेश्चंस ऑफ फार्माकोलॉजी दैट वर आस्ड इन यूपीएससी सीएमएस 2025 सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन द बेस्ट ड्रग फॉर मेंटेनेंस थेरेपी ऑफ एसएलई ड्यूरिंग प्रेगनेंसी रिमेंबर इन प्रेगनेंसी व्हिच इम्यूनो सप्रेसेंट इज सेफ रिमेंबर द ओनली इम्यूनो सप्रेसेंट व्हिच इज क्वाइट सेफ इन प्रेगनेंसी इज क्लोरोक्विन एंड इट्स डेरिवेटिव हाइड्रोक्सी क्लोरोक्विन सो द आंसर इज हाइड्रोक्सी क्लोरोक्विन नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन फर्स्ट लाइन थेरेपी इन सीएमएल क्रॉनिक फेज ऑफ सीएमएल वी ऑल नो द ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर सीएमएल इज इमेटेनिव सो आंसर इज इमेटेनिव ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर क्रॉनिक फेज ऑफ सीएमएल इट इज आल्सो ड्रग ऑफ चॉइस फॉर जीआईएसटी व्हिच ड्रग्स कॉज सेकेंडरी वेट गेन सो यू कैन इजीली नो दैट ऑर्ली स्टैट इज ओरल लाइपेज स्टैटिक दैट मींस इट इज लाइपेज इनहिबिटर यूज्ड फॉर ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ ओबेसिटी सो इट इज कॉजिंग वेट लॉस सो ऑब्वियसली विल नॉट कॉज वेट गेन thyroxin is a thyroid hormone it increase the metabolism so it will cause weight loss so these two cannot be the answer so insulin we know insulin cause weight gain and propranolol can also cause weight gain so the answer is 1 and 2 only okay next question which condition cause maximum hp a axis suppression so that means whenever we stop there is risk of Uh, person going up in emergency withdrawal symptom can occur so remember the longer we give the longer the problem will occur and the usually limit is 10 to 14 days we usually say if we are giving for more than 10 to 14 days hp axis suppression will occur so let's see the options glucocorticoid given iv route for 5 days no 5 days will not cause hp axis suppression glucocorticoid oral for 1 week again no it must be 10 to 14 days glucocorticoid have been prescribed repeatedly within the previous years they have not mentioned how many days so may be long time so this may be the answer moving to the last dose is less than equivalent of 5 mg prednisolone this is a physiological uh, glucocorticoid dose so this also will not cause so the best answer among these will be c here although it is not as clear but had they mentioned that how many days then it would have been better but here they have not mentioned so out of the four the best option seems to me is this okay next question which can be used for management of severe hyperkalemia remember for hyperkalemia we use three type of drugs one to increase the intracellular movement of potassium potassium which is present in the blood should go into the cells so three drugs are used for that purpose one is glucose insulin insulin increase the intracellular movement second beta 2 agonist like salbutamol they can be used and third sodium bicarbonate they all increase the intracellular movement of potassium second we can use calcium gluconate calcium in, uh, basically reverse the ecg changes of the heart it stabilize the heart membranes it do not affect potassium level but stabilize the heart membranes and third absorption inhibitors so we can give dyes like pteromer sodium polystyrate so they all basically bind to the potassium in the git and excrete it so body potassium decreases so three main type of drugs are used calcitonin not used iv sodium bicarbonate yes can be used polystyrene sulfonate is the one which cause binding of potassium potassium binder intravenous calcium gluconate can be used so answer is 2 3 and 4 so that is the right answer okay moving to next question which is correct regarding tall weptan tall weptan as the name says it is vasopressin antagonist it is a vasopressin antagonist so what is special to remember about tall weptan we have two vasopressin antagonist one is tall weptan and second is coniweptan coniweptan so what is the basic difference is coniweptan the name says isko oral ko nahi de sakte oral ko nahi de sakte means it is given iv whereas tall weptan is effective orally this is one thing second important difference is tall weptan is selective v2 antagonist v2 receptor antagonist whereas coniweptan is blocking both v1 and v2 okay ये किसी भी रिसेप्टर को कोनी छोड़ता ये कोनी छोड़ता किसी को भी V1 को भी V2 को भी दोनों को ब्लॉक कर देता है ठीक है सो दीज आर दी मेन डिफरेंसेस। नाउ कमिंग टू दी ऑप्शंस, यूजफुल इन हाइपोवॉल्यूमिक हाइपोनेट्रीमिया नो वेप्टान आर यूज फॉर हाइपर वॉल्यूमिक और यू वॉल्यूमिक हाइपोनेट्रीमिया नॉट फॉर हाइपोवॉल्यूम antagonist of the v1 receptor wrong it is selective v2 receptor antagonist should be used for at least one year not it is used maximum for 30 days otherwise it can cause hepatotoxicity so tony uh, tall weptan the name says it is toxic to liver on long term use long term use will cause liver damage it is an oral drug that is the right thing oral drug is the right thing. okay next question 
person with alcohol dependency comes with abdominal distension shifting dullness so basically there is liver disease and plus the person is having uh, ascites so what is the drug of choice we all know the drug of choice for ascites or edema due to cirrhosis is spironolactone spironolactone is drug of choice for edema due to cirrhosis okay. next question which is jack inhibitor janus kinase inhibitor remember any drug whose name end with citinib citinib like tofacitinib and baricitinib they are jack inhibitors tofacitinib baricitinib baricitinib so these drugs are mainly used for rheumatoid arthritis and inflammatory bowel disease inflix all other are ending with mab so they are monoclonal antibodies they cannot be jack inhibitors it, it is was an easy question next question adenosine what is correct correct we all know adenosine is used for PSVT. Adenosine is a drug of choice for PSVT. So, only important thing is you need to remember, know or you need to find out what is PSVT out of the four. Atrial fibrillation is not PSVT. Tachycardia is not PSVT. Atrial flutter is not PSVT. What is PSVT? It is re-enterant tachycardia. AV nodal re-enterant tachycardia is PSVT. So, answer here is B. AV nodal re-enterant tachycardia termination. Remember the dose of adenosine is 6 mg. First dose, second dose 12 mg, third dose 12 mg. It is given quick IV, fast IV. Fast IV and if we want to find the dose in children divided by 60. So, child dose, first dose is 0.1 mg per kg divided by 60. Second dose will be 0.2, third dose will be 0.2. Okay? So, that is adenosine next question what is the correct way of using metered dose inhaler so inhaler normally which we are using in asthma how to use that again it is logical you just see the logical step the first step will be obviously to open the inhaler so we remove the cap and shake the inhaler the first thing is we remove the cap shake the inhaler that is the thing we do so see where the two is number one so answer can be either b or c remember three Breath, breathe out gently and place the mouth face in the mouth without opening if you put in the mouth it will be useless so this cannot be the answer this cannot be the answer so answer is either 2 or b or c is okay then moving to next thing after that they have written either one or three let's read one and three one is incline the head bar backward to minimize orophageal deposition and three is breathe out gently and place the mouthpiece in the mouth so obviously so if you First, you will place the mouthpiece in the mouth, then you will incline. Obviously, you will not do like that. First, do that, then put like that. Okay. So, the second step obviously should be to breathe out and keep the mouthpiece. So, second step should be three. So, that becomes the answer. Let's see other options. Then, number one, that means then we will tilt the head backward, tilt the head backward so that secretions do not accumulate. Then, number five, that means simultaneously begin a slow, deep inspiration and depress the canister. So, now, so, what is the steps? The first step will be open the cap, open the cap and shake the inhale, shake the inhale. Second step will be to keep it in mouth, to keep it in the mouth, gently keep it in the mouth. Then tilt the neck upwards, tilt the neck upwards and uh, through the secretions do not come. And then the next will be to start inspiration and put the canister, open the canister or we can say push the canister so that the drug comes. So, after the drug comes, now we need to hold the breath for 10 seconds. Right? So, that is the way to use. So, answer will be 2, 3, 1, 5 and 4. Okay. Next question. Under stepwise approach to manage asthma, what is the first step? So, obviously in the asthma, what, what they do is they give inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting beta 2 agonist that means formoterol by the inhalational route this is used SOS SOS and if the person is regularly developing the step one will be to give this regularly daily okay so the step should be in inhalational corticosteroid low dose plus formoterol but there is no such option so low dose inhaled corticosteroid only low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus oral corticosteroid doesn't make sense low dose inhaled corticosteroid plus long acting anti muscarinic agent no long acting beta 2 agonist we are using formoterol so this is not the answer leukotriene antagonist is second or third step we do not use so among these by ruling out it remains only low dose inhaled corticosteroid we are assuming that person is already taking the formoterol inhalation okay so the answer will be one next question first choice in acute gout so remember the drug of choice for acute gout nowadays is nsx and if NSAIDs do not work, then we will go for colchicine. Acute gout. Yeah? So, among these, methotrexate is used for rheumatoid arthritis, not for gout. 
oral colchicin is the answer among these allopurinol sulfa salazin are for chronic gout not for acute gout so the right answer become oral colchicin among these okay next question what is antidote for exabans 10a blockers remember 10a blocker the antidote will be and dexanet the name says it is anti dot of 10a neutralizers anti dot of 10a neutralizers is and dexanet idarucizumab is monoclonal antibody against dabigatran so it is anti dot for dabigatran hydroxocobalamin is b12 it is not anti dot for these glucarpidase is anti dot for methotrexate it is a methotrexate cleaving enzyme okay next which is due to reverse dabigatran same question repeated so answer here is idarucizumab idarucizumab is for dabigatran Glucarpidase is already discussed, methotrexate antidote. Desferioxamine is for iron poisoning and protamine is for heparin poisoning. Next, which antidote is used to treat poisoning? Formepizole. So, formepizole we know is alcohol dehydrogenase inhibitor. It is competitive inhibitor of alcohol dehydrogenase. So, used for alcohol poisoning. So, what are alcohols here? Methanol and ethylene glycol. So, it is used for 1 and 4. So, that is the right Okay, next question. A child is diagnosed with ADHD. Which drugs are used? So, ADHD, we all know the drug of choice is methylphenidate. The alternative drug is atomoxetine. Third drug we can use is clonidine. These are the three drugs we commonly use. So, carbamazepine is not used. Clonazepam is not used. So, answer will be 2 and 3. So, that is the right answer. Okay, next question. Correct regarding hyperkalemia in child. So, again revising three drugs which are used for hyperkalemia. One which increase intracellular movement. These include sodium bicarbonate, insulin glucose, and beta 2 agonist. Second, which causes ECG changes, reverse ECG changes? It is calcium gluconate. And third, which is increasing the excretion of potassium from the body, bind the potassium and remove potassium from the body. That is potassium binders like polystyrenate, petiromer like drugs. Okay? So now seeing the options. Intravenous calcium is given to enhance cellular uptake. No, it is to reverse ECG changes, stabilize the membranes of heart. Beta agonists are used to stabilize the myocardial cell membrane. Wrong, that is done by calcium. They are causing increased intracellular movement. Regular insulin and glucose given IV enhance cellular uptake. Yes, that is right. Sodium polystyrene sulfonate enhance total body potassium elimination. Yes, by binding it excretes the potassium. That is right. So the answer is 3 and 4. Okay. Next question, antidote for belladonna. We all know belladonna poisoning, drug of choice is physostigmine. So, belladonna poisoning, with also known as dhatura poisoning, atropine poisoning, anticholinergic poisoning. So, we remember from dhatura, we have dryness, dilated pupil and delirium, H for hyperthermia, A for agitation, T for tachycardia, U R for urinary retention and A for accommodation lost. That means there is blurred vision. Okay? So, atropine is antidote for Cholinergic poisoning like organophosphate poisoning, flumazenil is for benzodiazepine poisoning, whereas physostigmine is for belladonna poisoning. Okay. Next question. A farmer, we know farmer. I told you if there is farmer, it is almost always organophosphate poisoning, frequent urination, excessive salivation. So that means it is cholinergic poisoning or style cholinesterase inhibition poisoning or organophosphate poisoning. Okay, next question, which is true regarding salicylate poisoning? Remember, in aspirin poisoning, initially there is respiratory alkalosis. Remember, first of all, the respiratory system hyperventilation occur. Hyperventilation occur, carbon dioxide is removed. So, when carbon dioxide is removed, respiratory alkalosis. So, carbon dioxide low will be there. After that, aspirin will keep on accumulating, leading to metabolic acidosis. Metabolic acidosis because lactic acid is accumulated, aspirin is accumulated. So, that will lead to high anion gap also. So, high anion gap metabolic acidosis. So, anion gap or phi with metabolic acidosis. So, these are the two things which are noted. Remember, this is low anion gap metabolic acidosis, no. And this is respiratory acidosis, no. So, answer is 1 and 3. 1 and 3. Okay. So, moving to last question. Which of the following oral drug may be used in management of super refractory status epilepticus? So, first of all, what is super refractory status epilepticus? So, let us classify status epilepticus. It is into four stages. First is the developing stage. Developing stage means the seizures have started. 
but status epilepticus usually means more than five minutes of convulsive seizures. So they have started, but during that phase only that is developing. Then established means more than five minutes of convulsive seizures or more than 10 minutes of non-convulsive seizures. Refractory means when we have given two anti-epileptic drugs and still the seizures are not controlled then it is refractory and super refractory means if the seizures continue even after 24 hours of giving anesthetic agents. We have given anesthetic agents also when more than 24 hours have happened, still the seizures are not controlled that is called as super refractory. So how to manage? So developing we know status epilepticus normally the drug of choice are benzodiazepines like lorazepam which is normally the drug of choice. The alternatives we can use dizepam or we can use intramuscular midazolam. They are developing stage or normally when we say status epilepticus. When it has been established more than 5 minutes has happened, we have already given lorazepam like drug. Then we will give another drugs with them. These include either valproate, levetiracetam or phosphenitoin. They are given as infusion along with the lorazepam like drugs to control seizures. And if these two drugs are not controlling benzodiazepines plus one more drug we have given they are not controlling that is refractory so in the refractory we will start giving anesthetic agents anesthetics we will give anesthetic agents commonly we use either propofol or we use intravenous midazolam remember initially it was intramuscular midazolam now it is intravenous midazolam so basically anesthetic agents now if anesthetic agents are also not able to control then it is called super refractory super refractory status epilepticus so here we can use either iv agents or oral agents the iv agents we are using they include lecosamide and brivaracetam which are the new drugs lecosamide and brivaracetam but the oral drugs which can be used for chronic purpose long term purpose they include topiramate and pirampanil topiramate and pirampanil are oral drugs whereas iv drugs are lecosamide and brivaracetam okay so now coming to question which is the oral drug for super refractory status epilepticus so the answer here is topiramate topiramate other three drugs are usually not indicated in super refractory status epilepticus okay so these are the important questions that were asked in upsc cms exam thank you very much